flappers danced the Charleston. In America, women won the vote. King Tut's Egyptian tomb was discovered and opened in awe. The inauguration of the League of Nations took place in Paris. Insulin was discovered in Canada for the treatment of diabetes. The first Winter Olympics were held in Chamonix, France. The Netherlands passed a law for an eight-hour working day. Our world was changing all around us, but one thing stayed the same. We suffered through the misery of hot, humid summers with little relief. That is, until an engineer named Willis Carrier hatched an idea that he had been incubating for almost three years, the centrifugal refrigeration machine. Carrier had invented the science of air conditioning nearly 20 years before, but his machines benefited manufacturing processes, not people. He had considered the widespread use of cooling for human comfort, but was concerned about the safety of the refrigerants then in use. Size was a problem too. The machines that would be needed to cool large spaces inhabited by many people would be massive, unless, he reasoned, that a centrifugal compressor could be used in place of the reciprocating compressors which were common at the time. The design and building of the first centrifugal machine began in the fall of 1921 in Carrier's new factory in Newark, New Jersey. When it was ready, and to make sure that New York area engineers would attend the new machine's unveiling, Carrier treated his guests to a boxing match and dinner. The date was May 22, 1922. That night, some 300 people witnessed a quantum leap in refrigeration and air conditioning technology one that would dramatically change the way we would live, work, and play. His first customers were industrial. In the United States in 1923, the Stephen F. Whitman & Sons Candy Company, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, needed three centrifugal chillers for its chocolate factory. The Onondaga Pottery Company in Syracuse, New York, installed Carrier's original prototype machine. Forty years later, this iconic machine was displayed at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., where it resides permanently. But Carrier didn't realize his dream of true comfort cooling in human terms until the owners of Detroit's J.L. Hudson Department Store installed a centrifugal chiller in 1924. Once installed, people no longer fainted from the heat during the store's popular basement bargain sales. Madison Square Garden in New York City was next. It was the opening game of the 1925 pro hockey season, and the garden's owners were worried, worried that if the ice was soft, the season would be ruined. Before then, no one had ever tried to freeze a hockey rink with brine from a centrifugal chiller. Before the game, Carrier laced up his ice skates, took to the rock-hard ice, and knew that the garden's owners had nothing to worry about. In the summer of 1925, when movie lovers read advertisements about cool comfort and carrier manufactured weather at New York City's Rivoli Theater, the ticket line was a block long. Few people remembered the film that night, but the air conditioning was a big hit. Over time, carrier was changing the way we lived as comfort cooling systems were installed around the world. By the end of 1940, shortly after thousands experienced air conditioning for the first time in Carrier's famous igloo at the 1939 New York World's Fair, the company had sold its 1,000th centrifugal chiller. In so many ways, the history of air conditioning is a history of Carrier, with the centrifugal chiller at its heart. By 1961, 10,000 Carrier centrifugal chillers had been sold, 20 years later, the number was up to 40,000 and climbing. Carrier centrifugal chillers have not only made large buildings cool and comfortable since 1922, they have made the world we live in today possible. From where we live, places once thought uninhabitable, from deserts to the tropics, to any hot and humid location, to how we live, work and play. High-rise office and apartment buildings, hotels, hospitals, airports, subway stations, sporting venues, museums, and cruise lines have all benefited from centrifugal chiller technology. By delivering precise temperature and humidity, 
centrifugal chillers also provide controlled environments to manufacture products which impact almost every facet of our modern lives. From medicines, advanced materials, plastics, chemicals, textiles, automotive, mining, food processing and storage, along with many aspects of this modern digital age, electronics of every type, semiconductor chips, data centers, robotics, and things that even go out of this world. The industry has probably seen as much change in the last few decades as it has seen since Carrier's original inventions. Ozone depletion, global warming, indoor air quality, energy availability, decarbonization, and natural resource conservation have forced us all to re-examine our approach to climate control. And through it all, the centrifugal chiller has and will continue to lead the way in helping to solve these issues. But technological leadership is still at the very heart of Carrier's continuing evolution. Willis Carrier knew the importance and obligation of such technical leadership when he said, we cannot stop at the original achievement. There is an end to the life of all patents, and where a good path is found, others will follow. Willis Carrier championed innovation and an uncompromising approach to meet all of his customers' needs. And it's a tradition which continues at Carrier today. Our new products lead us on a path which others will have difficulty following. It's a path of no compromises for our customers. Building owners can now have systems which yield both energy efficiency and low operating costs without sacrificing comfort, safety, or environmental protection. Compressors and heat transfer surfaces have been optimized for next-generation, low global warming potential refrigerants, contributing to these dramatic improvements. Carrier's development of the AquaEdge 19DV centrifugal chiller utilizing R1233ZDE has been recognized by multiple industry and government agencies around the world for its efficiency and use of ultra-low GWP refrigerant. It's an achievement of which Willis Carrier would be so proud. Its very existence confirms Carrier's technological leadership and symbolizes the goals he sought throughout his career and are the ones which we embrace today. When Willis Carrier was awarded an honorary doctoral degree, the citation read, in recognition of scientific insight and inventive genius of the highest order, enhancing man's comfort, health, and effectiveness through the advantages of air conditioning. It is that heritage which still inspires and guides us today.